This March Madness betting strategies and first four picks edition of the Sports Gaming Podcast is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's K U T T dot com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by SGPN subscriber only March Madness Bankroll Challenge. Free to enter and up to $2,000 in prizes. Enter today at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash madness. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick them for a chance to win 100x in NBA, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Pets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. What's up, guys? This is Carson Steele. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with our partner picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer. Dog. I love the job of the selection committee, Sean. Yeah. Great. Feel like they nailed it. Six teams from our mountain West conference. How about that? Mountain West. Uh, yeah, not, not not necessarily showing the love when it comes to the seating. We'll get to that. We're going to react uh, to selection Sunday. We're going to talk March madness, betting strategies, AKA our March madness, 10 commandments and the first four picks, the first four plays of the 2024 March madness. Joining us here to talk all things, college basketball in studio, Colby Dan, AKA pick Dundee. What's happening, Colby. You guys changed the locks. I had mm. to, uh, had to ask the cleaning lady to get in here. Oh, huh? <laughs> had to break. I will. Well, changing locks. I assume. Uh, I assume Colby was talking about. I told you. Well, hey, when I heard that there was a, a half point move, I had to change my picks. Oh, I thought it's got it's got being sharp. You know <laughs> what I mean? I thought you guys were having a Drew Lock conversation. Oh Woo! yes, Ryan Speaking of changing locks. Ryan, uh, are we sure the Bears aren't keeping Justin Fields? That was a that uh, was a fun ride. I'm sure now. Okay. I'm sure they're not keeping him now. And I was pretty right on the compensation. We're not. Uh, we're not here to talk NFL. We will be doing some bonus NFL episodes. People are mad that we haven't talked. Well, NFL we much. we are an NFL show primarily. NFL is uh, is the bread and butter, the sports gambling podcast. But we're in college hoops mode. Colby, give me your uh, your instant reactions to the brackets. Oh no! Look, I mean, I feel like I get a bad rap for talking negatively. No, oh, because you hate everything. But yeah. No. Besides that, well, yeah. I love life. I love life. The the thought of uh, you know filling out a bracket is yes, very exciting. Very fun. We got a printable uh, SGPN March Madness brackets on the way. And real quick, even before you get to it, of course, uh, we're hooking you up with a contest like we always do. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash madness. And this contest is cool. It is subscriber only. So uh, every show that you subscribe to on SGPN, you're going to get ten thousand bonus credits. Added to your bankroll. So if you subscribe to a bunch of shows, you're gonna you're gonna have a nice head start there. Thousand dollar winner take all two thousand if you're on the Patreon and still time to get in on merch madness. Uh fifteen percent every off everything in the merch store. Promo code madness. But Colby, what was uh what was getting in your craw today? Well, I'm saying like every year you can normally just find like one team that deserved to be in. You know, and that, I feel like that's why I, I would bitch for like I, it was for Xavier two years ago, Oklahoma State last year. You know that that's normal, and I'm yeah. okay with that because you still had your opportunity to win the games, right? Even though I think they got it wrong, but what happened today was awful. This is like the worst that I can recall. At least I I, I remember like being outraged once in like the mid 2000s at <laughs> one, but this is the worst one of all time. Why was it so bad? Well, who it's just, got, there's who so got, many, there's so many levels to who it. Who got screwed the worst? I think it's subjective, but I would say like to me, no, of course, uh, the big East 
or oh, or see. Mountain West. You know what I mean? Like the Big East and Mountain West got really fucking screwed. Big East is the second best conference in college basketball. I think everyone who watches the games every day would tell you that. And to only get three teams in in the best, con- you know, the team with the national champion does and, seem a little and odd. the number one team in the nation, the number one team in the tournament. To um, me, it's odd. Uh, yeah, like the the fact that Seton Hall and St. John's didn't get in. Uh, 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 Providence too. I mean, uh, but St. John's yeah. is twenty five uh, in the nation according to Ken Pop. Oh, that, uh, I personally think Seton Hall is the one that got robbed the most because oh. C- Seton Hall has wins against UConn, Marquette. Yeah, you know, like that, like they've beaten the one and two seeds, and it just doesn't make any sense. I, I've always found the, uh, any of the analytics phony to me. Like, uh, it doesn't make any sense to me how you can have you know Michigan State even in the tournament, let alone a a nine seed or Dayton getting a seven seed. The love for the Atlantic Ten, and I love the Atlantic Ten. Like I grew up, a, yeah. Yeah. like in the heart of Atlant- a, the A Ten. It was a down year for the Atlantic Ten, and the overseeding of Dayton, which, like I said, I don't even think they should be in the NCAA tournament. They lost to Duquesne, they, and they have nothing. They're the the irony is Dayton's best win is against St. John's, who's not in the tournament. <laughs> so what is giving them that that benefit of the doubt here is uh, of of saying, hey. Are yeah. there is there is there a team you're disappointed you're not going to see in there from a gambling point of view? I thought uh, I I understand why they're not in the tournament, but um, Ohio State with the new head coach would have been fun, and they just lost to Illinois by three in the Big Ten tournament. But before that, they had won five in a row. Uh, it felt like they were like the perfect team to get hot and go on a run. Came up just short in the Big Ten college basketball tournament. I, I get why they're not. Uh, you know, they're, I mean, they b- lost a bunch of games. I understand why they didn't deserve to be in, but they would have been fun to be in just uh, as a fun team to back. And gambling wise, I think they would have been interesting. I, I would say, like, Indiana State so is per you know, Ken Palm, the best teams in the nation that did not make the tournament. St. John's at 25. Which I think that that feels. I mean, even just from a narrative standpoint, like, what are you fucking idiots doing? But, but even you're not going to invite Patino to the fucking yeah, party. Yeah, and, what the fuck and, is and, and they have a shot. Like they're playing Wake, a lot better basketball. Wake but. Forest at thirty-one, Nova at thirty-five, Cincinnati at thirty-seven, Pittsburgh at forty, Oklahoma forty-three, Indiana State forty-five. Who finished with a higher ranking than Drake? Where do they have Seton Hall? Naturally, Ohio State forty-seven, Utah. 50, Iowa 52, Providence 54, Xavier 56, and Seton Hall down below UCF 61. See, but even UCF that doesn't make zero. sense to me. Again, like, these are see, these are not these are uh, these are efficiency numbers, right? This is not play yeah. the games numbers and I think you know <clears throat> generally there's not a huge gap. I mean, I, I can't remember the last time we've seen a team in the top 25 of Ken Palm not make the tournament. Well, I'm trying to remember. There there were a number of quote unquote bid stealers. These teams that uh, one that you know people weren't expecting to win that really probably ate at some of these at large bids, which would have read a little bit. Yeah, you know, it wouldn't I, have I made it as. I subjective. can't help but think of though the fact that the SEC and Big Ten are you know how did Virginia get in? Yeah, I mean that well, we can talk about that, getting, but, but Virginia getting in at least it's a playing game. But Virginia getting in, they didn't uh, deserve is pretty to be great. But yeah, like how how is Hall, how is St. John's not in and over there? Yeah, I mean Indiana State certainly feels like they deserve to be in over. I thought they were going to put him in just because that uh, you know they wanted to get hype around that kid, like he was a fun watch. It Again, just, it, it just doesn't make any sense. It's just how, like the the logic does not make any sense. Like Duquesne ran the table in the A10 tournament. Shout out to Duquesne, their first year making yeah. it since nineteen seventy seven. But then they put them higher. They put them as an 11 seed higher than James Madison, who almost went undefeated. <laughs> and they and get this, it makes sense of this. So they give Michigan State what a, a nine seed or eight, eight seed, right? Um, they gave Michigan State. They overseed Michigan State to me like it's nine. They're a nine. They shouldn't even be in the fucking NCAA tournament, in my play opinion. Playing maybe. Uh, but but the irony is this: if you're gonna do that. You're saying Michigan. You're basically saying Michigan State's a much quality, more quality team. But James Madison beat Michigan State at Michigan State, which is better than any win how, that Duquesne has. How can you put, like, just for comparison's sake? Here are the eight and nine seed matchups: Mississippi State, Michigan State. You could argue both those teams shouldn't be in. That's FAU, it, Northwestern. You can argue both those teams shouldn't be in. Nebraska, Texas A&M. No, you Northwestern can, deserves it. You can yeah. argue that both teams don't deserve to be in. Utah State, TCU. 
again, Utah State won their fucking conference. They won a difficult conference, and you're putting them on the same level as a bunch of teams that might not be qualified to be in the tournament. I, I, and, and it's not like Utah State just went on a run. I, I, I don't understand. Uh, if I was going to get mad about anything, the, I agree. Like the underseeding the Mountain West feels silly. The fact that we crowbarred in UVA, uh, the overseeding of the Big Ten and SEC teams, uh, big, Michigan big State, definitely. Michigan State, Texas A and M, and Mississippi State are overseeded, and then the the random love for the A ten, the mm. the love that makes no sense. Like Dayton's Dayton's resume is horrible. How the fuck are they even in like that? I, we need to study. We need to Ken Palm. We need to study, but they haven't beaten no, anyone. No, I, Look I, at I, the I, schedule. <laughs> Dayton's best win is St. John's, I, and if you're not going to say that, then it's Duquesne. But guess what? Duquesne, Duquesne just beat them. That, that that's not a lot of meat on the bone. If you're comparing Dayton. No, I and, agree. And I, I would say that the teams that have like the teams that are in that probably, you know, got, got some help along the way are, I, I would, I think all of the eight, nine teams I just listed basically and, and, and every, the, everyone on the eight, nine li- line to me feels, feels like there was some special privilege given to put. Yeah, exactly. And right? then, like, and, and then to put the mountain West teams that have been awesome all year for real, re- like on the on the play in games. Like what's the case against Utah State? Like I understand their their Ken Palm numbers a little bit lower, but what what's the case? Like what is the case there? Why why is Utah State being shown the same level of respect of a Texas A&M team we didn't think was going to make the tournament, a TCU team that probably doesn't deserve to make the tournament. I know they're in a tough conference and to me FAU, that's the that's a that uh, a, as an 8 seed well, that 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 one makes no sense too. Well, like, what are yeah, they doing? I mean, I anyway, think FAU. You complaining. can argue that FAU deserves to make it, but certainly not as an eight seed. Here, I'm done though. Uh, let's they got move two on. quad four losses. FAU. Yeah. They well, it's, it's like losses. some teams bad losses were a problem. Some teams it didn't matter the, if you had bad losses. The numbers are all wins. nonsense. Like it makes me. Uh, it's 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 all who they re- want to put it, in. Is there a reason? Uh, like I understand a fan poll would be tough because you just have like voting and an alumni base, but. It, but how do you not get this to a more practical sense? Yeah, and, and they they don't watch the games. Less teams. I I, yeah. I truly believe they don't hire people. Oh no, that, they definitely don't watch yeah. the games. And one the guy they had on CBS I was actually talking a, basically along the lines of like, hey, we have twelve members, and when members change, their preferences change, and it's like, wh- like how do you guys and, not have a framework? And, you know, among those twelve, the Mountain West did not have any. Isn't well, that, isn't that fucking ironic? Three, three in the Big East, though, guys. This is like the second best conference in college basketball. How do you only let three teams in? Because Northwestern gets in. Because Texas A and M gets in. Texas A and M getting in. I, I don't know. That not State only did they A&M, get in, they State got State in as a nine. I'm okay with Northwestern. I think like Michigan State. You know what A and M. Here's what I think it is. I think the committee watches the major conference tournaments, and when they see some of these teams that they're on the fence about, like Mississippi State, we know, like have an impressive victory, they're like, oh, boom, tiebreaker. Even though they lose the next game, it doesn't matter. I, I, I'm a Colorado fan. Like I root for Colorado to win every game. Colorado, it, roster-wise, is as talented as they've ever been, but. They don't belong in over Seton My, Hall, so, Providence. So who do or, we blame? St. John's. We blame the bid stealers. These losers. Why we don't want upsets in the conference tournaments anymore. See, Jared, I'm, a, I'm ahead of it. I was on the job the whole time. Well, Jared, especially when they give you Duquesne an 11 seed. Jared had a great comment in the chat talking about the the bid stealers fucking things up, and then the interviews uh, with the committee, how hard it was this year, and then the host thanking them like they were first responders. <laughs> they really was. <laughs> it was just a parade of. Ah, uh, you know, we were in the trenches there. We were on the front lines doing everything. They were the committee a- was very a, self congratulatory. I'll, I'll be the commissioner. Ask me a question, Ryan. I know it was a. Ve- they even set them up. I know it was a very difficult year this year, trying to whittle it down. Why only three teams in the Big East Conference this year? Oh well, thank you, Sean. That is a great question. <laughs> You know, I think you know we, we, you start out. we get to see all that excitement in the conference championships, and we we love that. We love we're administrators. We we work with students. We we love to see how how these teams that don't normally get a chance are having that excitement. But we know that means tomorrow we're gonna have to take some excitement away from some teams. <laughs> and it's like and like no ever actual explanation of the process. It's li- I mean that if you want to talk, I mean it, it's, it's political season. They, they were just oh. seeing how far they were spitting on their fists and see how far they could get up that guy's ass. I mean, maybe it's the other way around. Michigan state 
other than a a win in Detroit against Baylor, they have nothing on their schedule. That's but good. that's impressive. If they win, like, we will be referencing Tom Izzo on short rest against North Carolina. We, they, <laughs> I, we will be buying. If they, this. if they, yeah, if they win that first game, I might have them well, that, upsetting that, that's UNC. Sh- that's the that's the funny thing. Well, that's what's shocking about. Patino not getting in, and and the only thing I can deduce from we that, really were robbed of Patino. Oh. The only <laughs> thing I that, can deduce from that, that beautiful is, uh, is uh, the fact that Izzo's in the Big Ten, and the Big Ten calls the shots. The Big Ten and, and, and SEC call the he shots. He doesn't like him. Yeah, and we were really were robbed of a Patino Patino playing game. Like, come on, New, Me- New yeah. Mexico's an eleven seed, which uh, you know they're doing ten seeds this year as the playing tournament games. Like, yeah, come uh, on. and even with this, the play in games robbed us of a rivalry game. Colorado and Colorado State could have played, which yeah. would be awesome. Whoa. Much, and, Whoa. And, and, Rob, yeah. I didn't know this either. Would they played on campus. <laughs> they they said this. I, I had no idea that the committee uh, dealt with this, but BYU, they won't schedule BYU on Friday because Friday they would win. They can't play on Sunday. So they had to make yeah. BYU a Thursday, Saturday. And they said that actually helped. That bumped up Gonzaga's seed uh, from a six to a five. I think. I, I shit you not. That was something that they were breaking down. I'm like, what? How did it? It's uh, it's all a hot mess. But hey, we got the March Madness betting commandments. I mean, come on, it's a clusterfuck. But we're here to give out some picks, win some cash, and of course, uh, what better place if you're betting March Madness? You got to do it over on Cut. Love Cut. It's head to head. I mean, think about. It. Going back and forth, you know, one buddy's got Duke, the other one's got Vermont. Uh, it's so fun, and and uh, what better way to get a great price for all your March Madness bets? Uh, good luck getting a first half over in on over a cut. I feel like uh, our the, our audience makes up a decent portion of the cut um, social sports betting crew right now, so we'll see. Uh, but who knows? Put out put out a bunch of first half unders, and you can you can set your price. You can come up with your own bets. It is uh, just really fun, and of course, kutt.com promo code SGPN get a ten percent deposit bonus. Kramer, I got a custom bet for us. I was gonna say, uh, does that is, is the fact that we have all the DGens in in the cut ecosystem influence where we have to set the first half under? So I was thinking, out? yeah, let's set, uh, let's get cut to, or we can we can send it over to cut. What? How many first half unders are we gonna hit this March Madness? 36 games, and I'll say as graded by SGPN on using the first half unders on our sheet. On our sheet. Yes. Yes. 36. What are you setting the line at? And I will and make just it so even every, Just so it's extra transparent, the sheet will have a projected number. Yes. And then it will have the actual number um, when it opens, which is when I'm going to be betting them. Um, so, yeah. I, well, <laughs> so there are 36 games. Yes. Obviously, five hundred would be eighteen and eighteen. Yeah. I can tell you historically. Again, we're sitting at fifty-eight point nine percent. Should we just make it fifty-eight point nine percent of thirty-six? Let's make it a nice little sixty. What's uh sixty percent of thirty-six? Oh, we should be able to do that in our head. Twenty-one and a half. Yes. All right. Twenty-one and a half. I'm gonna I'm gonna send this over. Uh, to our buddy over what at you cut. Taking? com, what I'm you, taking what, what the over. Like? Smash the <laughs> over. What about you, Colby? What do you like? It's like the over. Col- yeah. I, uh, Colby was telling me earlier. He was on. He was doing a, a, a hit earlier, and the, the 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 hosts were asking him if uh, Colby bought into the first half under system. Oh that, wow! That had grown in popularity. Who is asking you? Um, it was. Uh, I was on the other guys. Yeah, I was on the other. The other. Yeah, the uh, the opposing. The, he the, was on the grid. Yeah, yeah. I didn't but who, who, who specific? Oh, a name. Uh, give me your. There, there give were me two name. people. There were two. Cole, Cole there basically two. lays on a bed yeah. and gets raw dogged by yeah. the grid. So he might not remember the face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did do. Did, do, do I was all over the grid. They yesterday. love. Well, they love college basketball. But but yeah, I mean, first half. So I, I would take. Uh, I can tell you, looking at the numbers, Sean. Uh, last time it went over twenty one and a half. It was twenty twenty one. And we all remember what happened in 2021. Mm. Last year, 18, 16, and two. The year before that, 2014 and two. And then, then the 2021 season happened. Oh well, so 21 and a half. It's an ambitious number. So we'll see. Uh, I'll tell uh, the cut guy to make it the uh, the juice even because I I do think uh, by taking that under or sorry by taking the over of the first half I, unders, I, you'll be able to get some under action. So historically, uh, four. 
and six, I believe. So yeah, I, maybe we make it twenty-one. We don't want to push though, right? No, I okay. I already said it twenty-one okay. and a half. Yeah, right? No coming back. No, I, I like the optimism. I'm just saying, if people and, and you, to your point, that will actually make it better. Though the sharps will come in thinking they're gonna, and we'll just buy up all that liquidity. I am I am about to uh, flood the market over. Uh oh, that, so. look out! Where's Kramer's my Where's be- my banker hat? Hey, uh, we're in our uh, LA studio tonight, but then uh, starting uh, tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, gonna be live from beautiful Las Vegas at that uh, super nice Win Studio. So again, if you're coming uh, to hang out in Vegas, come say hi. We're starting the show right at uh, ten o'clock West Coast time. If you're watching live, uh, make sure you Smash! that subscribe button. But if you're in Vegas hanging out, come say hi, maybe nine thirty at near the wind studio. Say what's up. We'll also be watching the games uh, Thursday and Friday all day at the Westgate ballroom, AKA uh, I think it's like hoop central. They call it. Yep. So where um where our buddy, uh, wait, who's the guy that sings there? Barry Manilow, Barry Manilow mm-hmm. is normally there. Uh, great ballroom, great setup. Shout out to Jay and all the guys over at Westgate. Hook us up with a nice booth there. So come say hi there, uh, Thursday or Friday all day. And then our Veasan show Friday night, six o'clock uh, Pacific, six to eight. Uh, we got Colby in studio, CJ in studio. We're really gonna break the Veasan studio. We're Bunch of <laughs> oh yeah, uh, no I mean, pants. It's gonna be a wild ass party. There'll be games going on. So I'm sure. Also, if you're a listener, hang out afterwards. Um, I'm I'm still hungover from hanging out with Derek on uh, what was it? This <laughs> Friday night, Ryan. Yeah, and you know, uh, it's it's gonna be a fun uh, thing to track because there there's a 10 p.m. show happening in the win on Friday yeah. night. Whether or not Sean and I are part of it, that's still left to be uh, determined. Uh, Colby will definitely be there with the TC guy. Smash that! Yes, and I'm also gonna be at the horse trailer hideout. Oh. Yeah, Whoa, what, wait, no, no donkey is, shows. What is this? Is this like um, a, and, uh, if, if ba- I, we need to check with Scott Bowser to see if this is a glory hole. <laughs> <laughs> he's got, he's got that. Uh, he's got them all mapped out. Hor- so. TCE live from horse trailer hideout. I forgot to mention this on the last show. Uh, Tuesday at six thirty and Wednesday at six thirty. Nice. So come on out, check a live show. Colby will yeah. buy you a beer. True. Very we'll true. buy you a beer. And it, you'll get to meet no one person. It might be, uh, you know, both things are are delightful. It might be whatever's on oh, special. Oh man, you remember uh, <laughs> remember Derek just busting Noah's balls so hard. The I can't last wait time. for. I, 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 he's I, like, oh, you're the new guy, huh? And he was just he just grabs some papers and throws them on the floor and goes, like, pick, pick that pick shit up. Well, we, shit it up. was it was yeah. definitely like a pledge. He goes, hey, uh, sh-, he basically was like at some point he's like, Sean, this is like an intern or something, a new. <laughs> and so immediately he's like, let me get in on this. I I know what to do with a new guy. <laughs> he was really uh, he was really busting uh, our balls. And uh, yeah, shout out to Jared Smith, the uh, fellow Veasan uh, co-host over there. He's also doing a bunch of shows over at Mandalay Bay. I'm sure uh, we'll be uh, syncing up, chopping it up. He's gonna. Be, I think he's doing. Yeah, he's saying he's doing the show uh, before. Uh, oh, on on Circus. So a uh, lot Hello. of fun. Hell yeah, go. Just taking that bitch over. <laughs> um, Let's get. Yeah, I really. I I can't wait for the reaction of the Friday show. Oh, it's gonna be great. Uh, CJ in studio. Yeah. Colby in studio. All right. All right. So we, uh, every year, we've slowly uh, crafted some strategies in stone, refined Chiseling. them, chiseled them. Uh, and, and we've, I think, I feel like they've, they've, uh, they've firmed up nicely. Oh, uh, there's some good ones in here. And with speaking of firming up nicely, quick side story we were hanging out. And we're, the reason why you want to hang out at the circle, we were hanging out uh, at the circle after the show. And, and a, uh, Pros, an NFL prospects dad who will be certainly <laughs> drafting the top. Oh yes, I almost forgot about. Showed that. up just to hang out with Derek, meet Derek. Big, uh, he's re, he was really he's a big. We're getting drunk with the. Uh, if you don't know, Derek's a first a big, round picks dad, and we're we were getting some nice uh, inside info. It was a very fun. Hang. A, anyway, uh, <laughs> also first round picks dad, such a G-Gen. I don't know how I will can't root for this kid now. <laughs> I know. Hashtag Dejan's well, only. well, Ryan, stay tuned. You might be. Uh, you might end up rooting I'm for. Setting him. up the set. if, if some of the uh, stuff he was saying. <laughs> Uh, you oh, guys yeah. can follow the breadcrumbs on those, but uh, yeah, it, in person, I'll tell you with my voice, <laughs> I'll share it in unrecorded format. Yeah. Great hang as always uh, over there at circa mega bar Kramer. Let's do it. All right. For, obviously first half funders thou shalt bet all 36 first half funders commandment. Number one, get the tablet out right in the uh, stone. Yeah. I was going through the numbers. Um, 
it's been uh, long term 225, 157, and 14. That's been so since we started oh the show in 2011, God. which you want to make yourself feel old. Uh, that is also the same year that the first four was introduced. Whew. Well, exactly, Colby. That's I felt the Feels same so way. Old. So we've always done it with 36, uh, all 36, including the first half unders. Uh, like I said, 58.82 percent last year. Uh, bro basically broke even. 18, 16, and two. Two in 2022, 2014, and two. But 2021 was the the reckoning. And uh, I don't I don't know. Um, I don't know. None of us parlayed it, but there were parlays involved. There were all sorts of uh, just. We changed people's lives, and but the, and the year before that, <laughs> Colby was twenty twenty when they took sport away from us. Oh, and we had to create. Still wake up in the middle of the virtual night. Cold madness. Sweats. Uh, lo saying. Long. Um. It. We've had a total of three losing years since we've been doing this. Again, back to twenty twenty one. This will be the thirteenth year, I believe. Twelve. Uh, yeah, thirteenth year. Yeah. So uh, I I think. There are there there is the 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 very valid question of hey uh, a lot of people are doing this now mm. it seems like you know the momentum gained from going into a pandemic us creating sport then us going on the heater of all heaters in 2021 caused this massive momentum and over the last two years there's been a lot more interest in the first half unders which has naturally we've seen a slight bump. And where these numbers are going, and also it kind of begs the question of: Do you bet early or do you bet late? I think because typically unders you'd want to bet late. Conventional wisdoms unders you bet late because people love betting overs. I think with the first half unders you just got to bet them early. I think so too. I think so too. What do you think, Sean? Yeah, I mean, uh, I could go either Be because way because of the popularity of the trend. Yeah, is that the the thesis? So we want to get the bets in as early as possible. I think, but also. Uh, these. I'm, I'm going to do it regardless, but I'm just, if you're asking me, so I, I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, 100% of the openers will be bet by me. Then if they're not open, like basically if they open before we get to Vegas, I'll have, uh, I'll go 50% digital just so I can buy tickets. Cause I'm 100% <laughs> buying tickets, but I also want to get down on, on the best of the numbers. So that will be my strategy. Um, now I think the openers generally don't open until 24 hours before. So we might be in Vegas already. Anyway. Kramer, I did slack you the, uh, the half inning. Uh, if people miss that, that is a, uh, I don't know if you're able to play that uh, video at some point, maybe we just play it now as we're talking for hey, well, uh, uh, just a uh, riff for a little bit. Give me, give me a couple minutes and we'll play it. Yeah. Uh, the first half half inning video we cut together using some of the clips I was just watching. It was it was during my running phase uh, in the pandemic where I looked super uh, skinny. It was a, it was a nice little run there. Yeah, Sean was the big big into running there for a while. Now I've switched over to hot yoga, but uh, yeah, I was I was running a ton. I still have my uh, half marathon medal. So oh, and how have we gone this far into the show and not mentioned Happy St. Patrick's Day? Oh, you guys are, I totally forgot. You guys are wondering why I'm drinking beer and whiskey. It's it, not. It, it is it's weird not though. Because uh, it's not because I have a problem. It's because I I'm I'm Irish and I'm celebrating culture. Colby culture. and and Ryan deserve a pinch over here. What do you not, mean? Not a piece of green on them. Oh come on, get oh, the fuck out of here with your green there shoes. We go. After the way that you've treated Italian Americans, you think I'm going to celebrate your stupid fucking leprechaun hey, holiday? I, I celebrate Christopher Columbus Day or whatever you uh, gabagool loving uh, gents over there. What a uh, uh, hey, whatever parade you got, I'm down for, Ryan. I, well, I mean, again, I don't have a problem with St. Patrick's Day. Typically, it happens while we're out in Vegas. So what's up with that? Well, that's what I'm saying. This is this is a weird really St. Patrick's Day because you're so used to just. Dr drunken March Madness. You know, I have a vivid memory of uh, I, I I'm showing up to a bar where uh, Vermont knocks off S Syracuse, right? And I I'm walking into this bar, and I see someone that I know. Didn't know that he would be at the bar, and he's so drunk, he's dancing. He sees me. He high fives, dances a circle, vomits green beer mm. on the floor. <laughs> Then starts dancing on top of that the vomit is a disgusting as the buzzer beater is happening. I like will, all within like uh, like ten seconds. It was I, one of the. I will say I yeah. did see a rainbow when we were out in Vegas. It was I raining. Did. Yeah, and it seemed to be uh, landing, uh, hitting the ground very close to the circus. So maybe we can go uh, hunting for a pot of gold. All right, <laughs> I, I'm prepared to play the uh, happening. Let's play the happening all, right. all time. 
What if I told you that sometimes a bet is more than just 36 first half unders that instead of simply winning money, you were helping a nation heal. That a predictive, back-tested, highly scientific model could bring people together. And that they would rise up in support of air balls, list layups, and shot clock violations. What if I told you that scoring big doesn't mean getting a lot of points? That the biggest shots are the ones that were missed. That first half unders can change people's lives. ESPN presents a 30 for 30 special. The Halfning, Tuesday, 8 p.m., presented by Levi's. The yeah. fake Jeremy yeah. Schaap or whatever. Uh, oh, you nailed it. Perfect. You, you, I mean, you can get some really uh, good stuff off of Fiverr. All right, Kramer, what's the uh, second March Madness betting commandment? All right, uh, commandment number two: Thou shalt respect balanced teams. Uh, once again, uh, leveraging great uh, analytical mind and graduate of Virginia Tech, Ken Palm. We have found a, a deep trend where we have only seen two national champions. Uh, so I believe this is uh, since Ken Palm has his data, which is, uh, I should know this, 1999. Since then, Y2K. Well, right before Y2K. Yeah, he was probably happy. <laughs> he wasn't in. worried about the computer <laughs> system going down. He was doing bits and bytes. So uh, since then, the only teams to fall without, uh, fall outside the top 20 of offensive efficiency. And adjusted defensive efficiency to win the national championship are 2014 UConn, 39th offense, 10th defense. You remember that team? That was the Kemba Walker team that won what 11 straight games or whatever yeah. to win the national championship. Very uh, Val Valvano esque. And then the 2021 Baylor team, but only because their defense was just on the outside at 20 seconds. Isn't this second a on offense? Uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't this kind of Changed last year as the games well, went on. Uh, so this is the explanation. So there, there is a, there is some some fluidity to the numbers because the the final numbers you see are the final numbers on the season. So the tournament day games get baked in there, and so for that reason, we've kind of created our own adjustment to the trend. And so this year, if we look at this year's teams, and I got to be honest, like I I didn't update this. Uh, so there's probably some of these teams have played a game. I doubt there's much change uh, in the numbers, but the six teams that fall within the top 20 of offensive and de offense and defense right now, who would be like the top contenders, Connecticut first and 11th, Purdue, Arizona, Auburn, Houston, and Marquette. Any, any issues with that list in terms of being, they, they deserve to be uh, considered contenders, uh, not like yeah, they could get upset, uh, but per, I, I mean, Purdue, Purdue, Purdue stands out one that, and Purdue uh, is the one team that has <laughs> yeah. the, they're yeah. on the edge because they're 20. Well, also defense. too, like, uh, per, I mean, Arizona got knocked out early. And actually, and you know, he got knocked out breaking early. News. Hit, the, hit the breaking news. Purdue actually since their last game. Oh, they're down to 21. We're bumping them uh, into the fringe contenders category. Cause their defense is now 21. So mm. let me update Connecticut, Arizona, Auburn, Houston. Wait, is this including Dukes? Uh, could we load Dukes last game in there? They're Dukes, not in Dukes they're not just in. out They're 25th defense. They're, not, they're still out. Um, uh, the only other team Marquette is now out too. All right. Mm. So the contender list down to four Connecticut, Arizona, Auburn, Houston. Do you have any issues Colby? Arizona was my team to uh, play in the national championship or win the national championship last year, and they lost in the first round to Princeton. <laughs> I think it was you so, and Jay Billis yeah, were like, "Yeah, yeah, this Arizona team." And, oh. So I'm just not uh, delighted to back Arizona. Yeah, I mean, I get that. Uh, I would also say Auburn. I don't know. I think those numbers, the jungle helps so much. It dilutes the, yeah. the these. I'm numbers. with you. Yeah. I, yeah. When I look at this list, it feels like we could uh, pretty easily just leave it to Smash. UConn and, and and Houston, and and be in a, a better list. All right. So then the fringe contenders. If we 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 look at offense, uh, top twenty offense, and expand to top fifty defense, and then do the same for top twenty defense, top fifty offense. You include Purdue, Duke, Gonzaga, BYU, and Creighton on the didn't quite match defensively list. And then Tennessee, North Carolina, St. Mary's, and Marquette didn't quite qualify on the offensive side of the ball. 
Uh, to me, the teams in here that get get pretty interesting are generally the ones that can play a little bit of defense and maybe mess up some some team style. I mean, BYU is interesting, especially depending. I mean, look at the look at their uh, look at their bracket: Duquesne, and then they play the uh, winner of Illinois, Moorhead State, Washington State, Drake, Iowa State, South Dakota State. Like, man, it's not a that's not a bad. A place for BYU to get put. I mean, but also it was very concerning in their conference tournament uh, that that one after they won that one game, coming back and just showing no defense. Uh, certainly troubling. Was but there, they're, they're is, kind of interesting as far as like a long shot. Is there a team on this list that's interesting to you? See, to me, the offensive teams are not interesting at all. The teams that have the slightly worse defense, I not, I, I I see all of them getting beat. I mean Carolina, obviously. Carolina on the yeah. defensive side, I yeah. agree. Uh, um, Tennessee obviously is good, so I mean they're going to. And they're a veteran team. That's a, I, I'm curious if you have one of these. Uh, Ex- what experience matters? Yeah, because I think that's something that's changing in college basketball. It did ten years ago uh, was not the case. Where now I feel like it is. Uh, it's 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 a big factor. All right, but the big takeaway here, for me, is is to identify teams to fade. And historically, the way we've done this is we've identified teams that fall within inside the top 20 of something. So top 20 offense, but fall outside the top 100 in defense or top 20 defense, but fall outside the top hundred in offense. So the list of fade teams is very interesting because it also feels organic. Florida Atlantic, who we already discussed, I understand they're an experienced bunch, but they, they feel very overrated. And even from an ATS standpoint, Everyone's going to remember them from last year, so they're they're going to be. It feels like they're going to be a popular pick in the first round, and then Alabama, yeah, who easy right because of the style they play. Now on the I team. thought they did get a nice draw though. I agree. I thought, they're playing I thought, a, light, it's a similar style, they're, right? They're, uh, well, just in general, that part of the yeah. bracket I thought was a nice draw if you're an Alabama fan. And then on the other side, you wouldn't believe it, but Virginia's on the fade list, and <laughs> I and I said this on our recent <laughs> show, Sean, that I didn't think Virginia was going to make it, so. I, all the teams we were talking about on the fade defensive side, yeah, weren't going to make it. UVA Rutgers, made it. Rutgers I, not going to be able to I'm, fade I'm either. I'm leaving Rutgers because how do you have the 209, <laughs> 297 on they're offense, not, four, fourth on defense? Yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, right. yeah. Just, I've never seen. I don't know if we've had a bigger disparity between <laughs> offensive and defensive ranking, maybe ever. Uh, so of the fade list, Alabama, Florida Atlantic, Virginia. Any issues with that? No, not at all. I mean, but the one thing I would say no, was no, that. No, no, uh, no. Virginia won a national championship with the, with a horrible team, <laughs> in true. my opinion. That's true. So yeah. I mean, but I still don't think I this think would be right. the ultimate Bizarro right. Bennett yeah. run. Yeah. Um, well, they were celebrating like they won the Super Bowl, uh, just getting into the tournament, yeah. which probably shows you, hey, they didn't even think they were going to yeah. get in the tournament. No, which, they didn't. Which you you gotta you always have to worry about the team playing with house money. That 100%. being said. Uh, they get a play-in game against Colorado, Colorado State. State. Who I'd love that team, but they they they'd fuck up a wet dream. What, talk about that. all alternative styles too. Like that game's going to be hilarious in yeah. Dayton, Ohio, because you have one team that just loves slows. offense. Yeah, well, yeah, UVA. Colorado State's just running. And yeah, yeah, and and uh, you know it's going to be interesting to see Tony Bennett against Nico. You Bedford. think their experience playing against teams like San Diego State help getting into That's some rock fights? That's the only fights? one there yeah, in the Mountain West. They've been in some rock um, fights. Yeah. It, it does seem like it. It I, yeah, I hate a lot of the the Mountain West matchups. Unfortunately, commandment number three, Ryan, thou shalt fade the first round upset. What do we? What? What's the? What's the reasoning here? The uh, logic. Well, so funny enough, it's not only so historically, and I, I don't have a long um, depth of the data, but I know this trend uh, is fourteen and twenty six ATS over the last thirty seven. When an underdog of seven points or more. Is off of a straight up win where they were an underdog of six points or more. A little confusing, but basically, if you're a dog of six points or more, you win. Next round, you're a dog, dog. of seven points or more. You are. That's the fourteen twenty six uh, ATS over the last thirty seven. Now, last year, Colby, you're probably yeah. wondering. It went three and zero ATS. <laughs> so it's due. It's due for some crazy regression. Well, and I mean, that's Florida Atlantic probably doing that, right? Well, they'd have to. So anyone. So we. Yeah, we'd have to pull up the the odds of anyone. So to be eligible, you have to be catching seven, uh, six or more points in the first round. Then uh, win and then yeah, still so, be catching points. So it's like, basically yeah. like the 
they, more or less the idea that the market's right. So, so last you year, were a huge upset. Princeton, for example. Oh yeah, they heavy, won and then they won. Dog. Yeah, then they won dog. and they won yeah. again. Think like yeah. Florida Gulf Coast a couple years back. Those are the teams that buck the trend. But typically, Saint Peter's, I imagine. Typically, yeah. you get excited about the team. They they get a little bit overrated. They're still catching a big number, and then the blowout happens. Um, yeah, we remember the ones that uh, that do, yeah, that do go because the they're run, the they're the outsiders. They're the you know the 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 outside uh, of the data set. The, but more, but as the numbers say, you're most likely just going to get destroyed the next game. It's yeah. even stronger if an underdog is any underdog is coming off a double digit victory. So a convincing win from a dog, they are three and twenty straight up and six and seventeen ATS in their next game. Uh, last year. One and two ATS, zero oh and three straight up. So, again, th this is similar. You're 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 basically looking to fade public perception of a team that maybe had a great game, and and is most likely now taking another major step up in class. Um, the, the strangely, the places where you actually don't have that happen is when the ones and twos uh, lose because the fifteen and the sixteen is now getting faced up against a much. E typically, if you're oh, five twelve, right, yeah. right, like the step up in class where you've already you're actually taking a step down in class. Now, I know so, you're a chalk guy, and I know we have to fill out the bracket later, but we don't have to. But I, I thought I'm for you, you, you already said UConn, North Carolina, Houston, and Purdue in the in the final <laughs> four. Right? Don't leak, don't leak yeah. Ryan's yeah. final four. So we're, we're teasing to the end. Tease the tease our final four. That was like every every selection. Show was like, you know, I really like this uh, UConn, and uh, I got I got UConn and Houston played in the national Can't championship. Can't see UConn losing. How many people have said that? I mean, they're they're uh, if UConn can get upset I, I, in the first I round. I was please. picking up a little uh, Dan Hurley happy with the regular season results. A, a lot of he was touting it. He said the best regular season. The best ever regular had. season. We did everything we could. We were so happy. We don't got to get on a plane. He kicked we, out. He kicked out one fan from every stadium. Yeah. Right? Um, he well, he seems very chill in the interview. That's why it's so funny. Him like just freaking out. He's psycho. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's got psycho vibes. But he was like, we went into Kansas. We got it done. Like he was smelling himself a little bit. I mean, he certainly deserves that confidence. Well, he should smell but himself. No, I'm just saying. I don't know if they had the hungry eyes uh, to repeat as champs. That's the feeling I got from that interview. If I'm being honest, sir. Yeah, uh, that's fair. See, Ryan already has him winning it all. No, uh, no, no. Commandment number four, Ryan, thou shalt ignore the seed number. What's the big takeaways here? Uh, I mean, this is, I feel like this is be, this is one of, this is almost, if not more public than the first half unders. Uh, more or less, <clears throat> I mean, we, we see this with the betting lines. And, and shout out to Jared because he, he was uh, talking about it. Uh, I saw on social. Um, Billis was uh, getting upset oh, with, yeah. with uh, some of the spreads. So yeah, I mean, I think we've seen this pretty clearly o over, re especially recent history. But you know, essentially the five twelve matchup mm, seems like there's a big gap in seed. Um, as we know, uh, it's often quite the opposite, and we've seen it in the number lately. We've seen a lot of these spreads that used to be eight nine points drop to like four five six points. Five seeds since twenty twelve. Uh, 25 and 19 straight up, but only 19, 24 and one against the spread. But last year, five seeds won an amazing four and oh straight up four and oh ATS. Colby, did you know that this is only the second time in 30 years <laughs> where all four or five seeds won last year? I'm picking year? all 12 seeds. We it's were just, we were just, just good math. Well, we were just talking about that. And I think this year, although, you look at those although, matchups and you, there's although some, UAB over San Diego State, I'm I, I like that matchup, though. I think UAB could win that game. I think, uh, well, who Grand, can forget, uh, Grand Canyon, yeah. San Diego Mary's. State was a five seed last year. Yeah, and then you have uh, Wisconsin JMU. Obviously, like I said, JMU already won at Michigan State. We had two knees, uh, Gonzaga. Yeah. Last year was an outlier. We had two five seeds last year. Make the final. Yeah, four. very, so, very, very different. Uh, uh, continuing the trend, um, I don't have any data, but we see it often. Six eleven, um, you, you see the eleven seed favorite in some cases, uh, maybe like one two points. But four thirteen, <clears throat> another upset matchup line that people love to try to take a stab. At least one thirteen seed has won a game in the tourney in eleven of the last fourteen years, Colby. So again, this is probably more bracket IQ, like filling out your bracket IQ. But yeah. I, I do think that we it, we 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 live in a time where you have to one of these small mid major, well put together teams that is all seniors and probably shoots the ball well. Um, one of them's going to win, so you got to pick. You got to find the one and, and attack it. Um, and then last one, fifteen seeds. Uh, and certainly a lot of uh, recency uh, fun 15 seed moments, but six 15 seeds have advanced to the second round in the last 10 tournaments. 
Woo, that's pretty crazy. That, I mean, that, it, that hello, Long Beach State. I remember when I was a kid. I mean, the had, Long Beach State story is yeah. great. They fired the coach. He's like, "Fuck you! I'm going on a run. I'm going to win the whole I, damn wouldn't thing." Wouldn't it be hilarious if, if since he won the conference tournament and they got the berth, if he just didn't show up for the for the <laughs> fucking? Like, I, I told I, I was told I was fired. Yeah. <laughs> I was so that was fine. Yeah, key yeah. card doesn't work. Yeah. Sorry, can't get to the game. Be the ultimate fuck you. Being like, hey, I, I'll show up if the athletic director's not there. <laughs> yeah, really, um, right. Like, yeah, I, get, yeah, keep that guy away from me. Uh, this one's always a favorite of mine. Commandment number five: Thou shalt respect the playing game. Of course, uh, UCLA has gone on a little run in the playing game. Syracuse had VCU. a little run. VCU has had a run yeah. in the playing game. Ryan, what's the uh, what's, what's I think the math? Tennessee with Quanzo Martin did as well. Yeah. <laughs> what's the math behind this? Uh, the math behind this. So since 20, 2011, when the sports gambling podcast and the first four were created, <laughs> uh, only once has a playing team not made the round of thirty two. So what does that mean? That means they're that obviously a playing. Uh, they they have to win the playing game and then they win another game. So only once this has not happened. So again, for your bracket, you kind of have to pencil in one of those playing games, and it's not going to be a 16 seed most likely. You're going to play one of those playing teams to advance uh, to the round of 32, aka the second round. Um, certainly will be a good opportunity for our Mountain West to buck a trend or two. Colorado Pac-12 teams have done this in the past as well. Um, yeah, five times. A playing team reached the Sweet Six team and two times. So what, reached the Colby, Final Four, real so. quick, of looking at the the first four teams, and we're going to get our first four picks straight up and ATS uh, coming up uh, it, once we get through the commandments, talk strategies. But early look, I mean, you just mentioned Virginia; they won, oh. they won it all with a shitty team. <laughs> of these oh. playing teams, who do you That's think? Such a great quote. <laughs> they won it all with a shitty team. Um, who do you, who do yeah. you think it has uh, the best chance of going to run? Not certainly not Wagner. Well, although I, I love that. I love their story. I, I, you know, it's it's tough because Boise uh, State, Colorado, Virginia, Colorado State, all ten seeds. Yeah, and those are the ones I think you obviously want to circle. But uh, not Montana State, the Bobcats. They got to hot one. late. They got wow. hot late. I I had them twenty to one. That was my big conference tournament win. I do have a comment here about this commandment and the adjustment this year. Historically, our playing games have been all eleven and twelve seeds. Well, that's true. They they weren't facing a two seed the next round. Oh, interesting. So th this whole idea that all these bid stealers were were depressed rate uh, depressed seed lines and they had to bump up the playing games. I've said this about Colorado. You know, like I said, I, I'm a Colorado fan. I would have not put them in the NCAA tournament for the record. That's right? that means they're gonna go on a run. No, but that I, means I, they're gonna go on a I, run. I'm saying they got the team for it. dude. That is the most talented Colorado team they of all time. That. Dude, I actually oh, wait, no, think Colorado when I, I analyze the roster, this is why I tell. Oh, they play. They would play Marquette. Do but Love they can it. beat. Oh no, sorry, they would play Florida. Yeah. Oh no, I'm wrong. Sorry, they wouldn't play Marquette until the round of 32. Yeah, but <clears throat> I'm just saying in general, like Colorado, when you like analyze their roster, that's like. I think I, I'm not calling for them to go, but I'm just saying like they could. That's a final yeah, four. That's, that's right, a final Sean, four Sean, roster. A second like, secondary cup bet. Uh, will a playing team make the round of 32? Oh, okay, great. What would we set this? Well, it, it's happened every year. Uh, only one year has it not. You could happened. just see Tony Bennett beating Texas, couldn't you? But I, I think even just what did we set the price at? Though? I think we. I think you could still set the price fairly even because people would not know. Well, th well, they're going to be dog. Like, all right, so Florida versus Bo uh, Boise or Colorado is is Florida favorite in both of those? Yeah, yeah. But and that's that, that's an interesting one though. Texas because, and but, UVA, uh, Colorado State, most but, likely favorite in both of those. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah you could probably make it close to even money. When does the uh, what time does the first Tuesday night game tip off? The first Tuesday night game tips off at three forty on the West Coast. Okay, um, so that is when the uh, first half unders bet will lock, and as well as this next one, we're going to get listed over on Cut. Uh, download the Cut app, promo code SGPN. I feel like we could lock the first half unders on Thursday morning because it's only four games those two days. No, but you, if we want them included, uh, uh, you have to, oh, I'm just saying like, you, yeah, yes, yes, yes. All right. I mean, we have, we call right, we say right. it the commandment, Ryan. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're going to fucking go to gambling hell. If you, you're right. if you no, you're go right. against that was, the commandment. It was a stupid comment. 
Number six. It's, I, don't beat yourself up over it. No, I'm not. Right? I mean, I'm not. I'm just I'm oh, okay. moving on. I'm just saying, yes, it was a stupid comment. <laughs> just like when you when a quarterback throws an interception, they say that was a bad pass. They move forward. Thou shalt not thou shalt not believe in fairy tales. Mm. Sean, you love a good fairy tale. I do. I was uh, hearing you you were singing some Frozen earlier. What? I'm I'm just joking. Oh, okay. I I you got I got my dog Elsa behind. Is that a band? I was making a yeah, I was making a Disney movie joke. You know, for people, the audience that has kids will really enjoy that one. Let it go. Let Sean. it go. Uh yeah, no, I mean, the idea of these teams going on a run, uh but you got a great nugget here, Ryan. Since 1985, only 5 teams outside the top 3 seeds have won the national championship. 85 Villanova is an eight seed. 88 Kansas is a six seed. And 85 is the cutoff because that's when it got to, 64, to 64 teams. Yep. Uh, 1997 Arizona as a four seed. Connecticut in 2011 as a seven seed. And then last year, uh, Connecticut as a four seed. So. And last year, what? Because San Diego State would have been. Both would teams have been, yeah, would either have, way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was the definitely entire final four. It was a four seed, yeah. two five seeds, and a nine yeah. seed. To to put it in perspective, since 1985, 27 of 160 Final Four teams have come from outside the top four spots. So, so is, that would be and last year, three of them were from yeah. So, so 133 <laughs> and 27, uh, as far as not. Uh, I mean, again, yeah. this is probably more for your bracket um, in terms of how you like yeah. how cute you want to get. And I even have a fr- like little bit of additional data here. Uh, I have all of the final fours back to 1985 uh, seed totals and averages. Fun facts. The h- highest cumulative seed total in the final four. We always hear people say you gotta, you, when you're doing your bracket, don't have that total be greater than some number. Well, the, the average over the average since 1985 is 11.7. So 11 and a half. 12. But if you look at the numbers and Colby's looking over my shoulder, you see these numbers were very low for a long time. And what have they done over the last decade? Transfer portal. It, it, it's, it's funny. And this is this, if you want to talk about a way that the, to, to prove this out. So if I look at only since 2011, the same window we've been using the seed average now goes to 15 and a half. So that yeah. number, everyone tells you of 11 and a half or 12 it just includes too much bad data. I mean, basically this, the, the, the total has only gone lower than 10 once uh, in that time once. And what uh, year was it? It was uh 2012 when we had Kentucky, Kansas, Lu- yeah. Louisville, and, and even Ohio with State. that, that, like that's still like so pre pre uh, portal. My point is I think you can be a little bit more aggressive in not taking the fucking shock. Like these CBS pundits, like these ESPN pundits, again, the average over the the sample of data from 1985 11 and a half when you decrease that sample window to just the last decade it's 15 and a half that's a huge difference yeah the massive difference yeah. last year was 23 we had a 26 uh, back in 2011 we had a, a you know a 13 a 15 a 16 so i definitely think you want to uh, avoid a single digit projection kramer next up we got keep holy thy free throw percentage my favorite March Madness betting commandment. Do we are these updated numbers, Ryan? No, we, I, okay. there, there, there's, there's no. Uh, I was, it was, it was becoming a little too difficult to go through the entire season. But what I, what I, again, what I have, I took your seventy-seven percent idea. Yes, and I, I pulled out again because I think conceptually this is about backing teams who shoot the free throw well in, in the right situation. And so seventy-seven percent. I'll give you a good example of a, a situation we might want to attack. How about Drake in Washington State? Drake shoots the free throw really well. What what is this number going to be? We're going to be catching points here. Yes. Well, certainly the kind of situation where I might look to be that might be a factor where I say, okay, well, Drake is certainly going to start as a bet on team for me, and I'm going to need a reason to not bet on them here because of this free throw disparity. Another one, Texas Tech and North Carolina State. Oh, the pussy pack fade the pussy pack, right? Well, well, why exactly, don't we? Why do we? We don't have to look too much uh, farther than. Uh, well, it's not. It's not necessarily not seventy seven percent, but Colorado State Virginia coming up in the first four. Seventy five point four for Colorado State Virginia sixty three point seven. What the fuck? Oh my god! If you want, yeah, I mean, if you want to know, um, you know, some some of the team, some of the elite free throw shooting teams that you know may maybe uh, you should pay attention to: uh, Clemson, Alabama, Creighton, Texas Tech, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And probably one of the reasons that Kentucky is interesting—they uh, shoot the free throw well this year. Stetson Drake, 
Uh, Wisconsin, where's my line? And that's where I that that is essentially where I drew my line. Oakland, Texas, very close. I, I think, I, and I would say not only seventy seven percent, but trust the sevens, Ryan. Uh, plus seven percent better against their opponent. To me, that is also like a good. Uh, difference maker on the bad side as Colby just mentioned Virginia who's bottom 10 in the in the country wait hold on this this unsorted let's see yeah Virginia who's bottom 10 in the country which very impressive Mississippi State St. Mary's again I'm all rock fight teams interesting one Colgate they're bad crazy so uh, how's happening right, let, let's let's talk this out how we work this one in practice who does Colgate have in the first round they got Alabama no, no, they That's got. Uh, Who does Colgate have? They have. That was a bad match. A Baylor. Okay, Colgate Baylor. So, Colgate's a team now where, if I look at this matchup and I see, okay, Baylor's a pretty competent free throw shooter to shooting team. It's not quite the sevens; it's six, but this is going to be a decent spread. This is a story. This is an easy narrative for me to tell myself. Well, the, the, the team shooting the better free throws is on the favorite side of it. This is another another reason for me to bet on this. And so, yeah, I, I think, I, I think to me, this commandment's more about it being like a, a, an additional piece of information. It's not the starting point, but it's like a, it's, it's, it's certainly, a good, it's a good tiebreaker at the very least. I think it's a, it, it, it's a reason to get on an, or off a, a position. I think if you, if you like a team, but they're in one of these negative free throw situations, you have to think about it. Um, Marquette's another team to throw out there. Not a very good free throw shooting team, mm, mm. you know, maybe circle that circle that one and see what happens. All right. What was that six, seven? Uh, we are on now on number eight. Thou shalt fade major conference tournament winners. All right, so uh, Arizona is a good example from last year. Typically, the reason we we like this, and again, this is another one where I think if we zoomed in, we might find as the conferences have pushed their tournaments back or forward, they're ending earlier. We don't have as many teams ending all the way up uh, until the last minute, and so the logic here is you just went on a what, five game run. Yeah. Uh, which is why some of these smaller NC conferences State. do their super like quad by system. So their teams don't have to play as many games, but NC state to me is a perfect example. I think they, they went on a, a long, they went on a run. They poured out a lot, a lot of energy, emptied the tank and Auburn uh, Auburn Smash. to me. Yeah. You know what? I, I don't honestly, if we went down the entire list of the major conferences, yeah, I mean, UConn. That's one of the things I was I, like, I, I was making this case that if you're a Houston fan, you're almost glad you lost. It was but nice. Yeah. I, when I saw that result, I was, it was perfect. Yeah. It was almost like Sam. It was like designed, you know? Yeah. It's like, all right, let's just take one on the chin. So I have some coaching material. Cause there's also that you can kind of talk yourself into this from the, if you're the elite team, you know, maybe having that taste of, of, of loss is, is what you need. And, and for the teams that just went on the run, you poured a lot of energy into it. We don't often see the Kemba Walker teams go on that run and then continuation. Uh, and so just in general, we're going to look to fade them a in our bracket, but more specifically where I like to, th this is where these teams are all going to be laying points. So I think again, this, this is kind of an indicator. Well, when I look at these major conference tourney winners, I'm not going to look to take them first. I'm going to look to fade them first. And if I don't like the situation, I move away. But I'm, I'm it's certainly uh, like I'm not laying the points with UConn first round. Promise you, not doing it. Not doing it. <laughs> the Hatters. Nine. Nine. The ninth March Madness commandment. This one's for Colby. Thou shalt not worship false gods. Uh yeah, Colby. Of course, uh, he loves some of these false idols. I did leave Jim Behine on the list of the, some of the best coaches. <laughs> But uh, more importantly, and, and worth noting, um, Matt Matt Painter decent against the spread, as is John Calipari in in in, in March. But that the was guy, that was the come up. I, yeah, I bet you if you right, do that recently. Right. Yeah. But the re here's the guys we care about. It's the coaches to fade. Again, I, I put Tony Bennett on this list, but because it's funny, not because I thought they're going to make the tournament. Yeah. They end up making the tournament. Tony, <laughs> Tony Bennett, not, eight and fourteen ATS, not great ATS. Mark out of you nine twenty seven and one ATS. Rick Barnes, whoa. Funny seeing you here, Rick. Oh my God! And uh, who, uh, you know, he's going to have to be the uh, the sole vampire in the tourney this year with uh, Rick on the sideline, just doing diner time. And then Jamie Dixon, nine and seventeen ATS. Granted, with a, a lot of this is with a different team, uh, yeah. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, but still, the past couple of years they've been knocking on the door. They haven't got it done. Don't speak not yeah. as strong in the tourney. Uh, maybe. I, I think to me this is, uh, and and just a, you know, I think we've been waiting for the Rick Barnes fade all year. 
And so that's the big one. I got it. But them exiting early makes me feel a little less good about fading Rick Barnes in the tournament. I don't. Not. not but there's also that stat that teams that lost their first conference game. Yeah. Oh, haven't. Uh, too long. Big, yeah. Too long of a laugh. Too yeah. much rest. Yeah. yeah. Get him on the sweet spot. Uh, it is. Uh, it is interesting. Matt, all, right. Do, all right. Do we count? Uh, going back to the major conference story because I see the chats talking Mountain West. Do we include the Mountain West in the conference? Major conference tourney angle. I mean, I think you need to now, but apparently the the rest of so we're fading uh, New Mexico? the panel. Are you fading New Mexico? No. Well, New Mexico is a tough team to fade. They won right the now. tourney. They play, they're playing the Clemson. Lobos. Uh, I, I love fading Clemson. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, last one, Sean. That uh, nobody shall give a crap about your bracket. If you're if you're rooting for <laughs> stuff, if if we see you. Yeah, in at the Westgate in Vegas, and you're rooting for uh, CJ had a great example. These kids were cheering for Purdue against FDU because they had Purdue in their bracket. Unless you're Steve Fezzik putting uh, forty grand on uh, Purdue at minus four thousand, don't fucking root. Root for your bets, not for your brackets. No one wants to hear you, especially if it's chalk. Sure. Like. It, uh, halfway through, switch teams and start rooting for the. Uh, Sean, do you upset. remember? Colby's you, Colby's great at this. Oh yeah. Do you remember Sean when we were in? Um, I want to say it was like the Harris Sportsbook many years ago. Might have been Caesars, and we watched a guy. He had ten grand to win one grand <laughs> on the Saints versus the Rams. I'll yes. never forget the match. Rams up. money line. It was and, like back in the greatest. No, oh no, it was, it was Saints. Saints. Yeah, okay. Saints money line. Uh, probably during the peak of Drew yeah. Brees, maybe. And the ran, like the, the Saints never had a chance. And no. this guy, he was fle- he was flexing, he was showing everyone his ticket. He bet ten <laughs> grand to win a grand. He goes, but, easiest, uh, best ROI of the afternoon. I, I have this visual in my head of him it just scared like me of slumped over. <laughs> it scared me off taking money line favorites for the rest of my life. Like people go, Oh, how are you become a gambling expert? Just watch a bunch of other losers or yeah. lose a bunch <laughs> of other bets and you learn what not to do and inherently yeah. become Slightly better at gambling. Yeah. It's, like still about ga- it's still gambling, but come on. You've been, you've been watching losers your whole life, Sean. There's a lot of I truth. Have. I mean, it, it is. Like, when you when you, you learn <laughs> what not to do, it's really that's the biggest thing you can learn. Being good at most things is knowing w- what not to do and when to get the fuck out. When to when to when to when to uh, yeah get off. When it. to when to sell your Doge coin. <laughs> All mm. right, uh, we uh, hey shout out to champs. They're also running their free March Madness bracket contest for a chance to win 1,000 bucks. You get two free entries if you host your own pool on Champs. So again, why would you not free? You want to talk about EV? Uh, Steve Fezzik's pro- probably all over this. A zero dollar investment for a chance to win 1,000 dollars. Two entries, uh, and all you got to do is go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com/champs. Tiebreakers are determined by who enters first, so make sure you register now. Don't want to miss out. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. And of course, as always, brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Uh, we have been on a nice heater with the uh, college basketball pick them. Shout out to Colby. Been and we developed the formula one higher, one lower for the college a basketball pick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when doing the live underdog read, uh, make sure to do one higher, one lower on the college basketball pick them. My crazy nine to one. For the NBA did not come through, but again, use the promo code SGPN. Get the hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Colby, do we want to do one uh, for the Tuesday games? Isaiah Stevens, we got to take the higher fourteen and a half points. Oh, is that- that's a that's yeah. Load up. <laughs> well, on I mean, that. but well, is, you know, it, it is, is Virginia. Virginia. There's only going to be twenty one points in that game, but uh, that's the yeah, that's what's scaring me. I'll or still do, do we it. do we fade a or do we go to UVA for the under like a Reese? Beekman uh, lower points. What do, what do we like here, Colby? I no, mean, the Stevens one. Will I, hit. I like Isaiah Stevens. He's just a fun guy to roof. That'll for. hit. That'll hit. I feel like I'm just going to keep losing money on this Colorado State team. Uh, but uh, any, so we're taking his points. Yeah, higher points. You don't want to take his higher turnovers against Virginia. It's Ooh, spicy. I do like that. It's spicy. What Actually, turnovers let's take at? that. Let's take that. What is that? What is it at? Two and a half turnovers. <sighs> is he? Is he that loose with the ball? No, nah, just t- just take the points. Just take the points. Or we could do a uh, higher uh, one and a half three pointers made. Five turnovers, three turnovers, one turnover, three turnovers. I'll just do the points. I think you know he'll he'll get his. All right. Yeah. Your basic ass points. No, nah, it's. I mean, I wouldn't mind the three pointers. Just saying. Uh, he's gone over this point total not a ton. Not a, he's not been crushing this point total. Not been crushing the point total. I got to be honest. All right, are we scared off of it? I think we might be scared oh off. Of it. All right, what do we want to do then? Do we do? Uh, 
Now he, now he's gonna dominate. But yeah. what do we what do we do? Oh, this is the only game we have. Then maybe we do. No, we yeah. have uh we have this one and oh I yeah, think, just it's just uh Colorado State. Yeah, t- that's what I'm saying. Take All right. t- take. You're the, the expert. Colby. Okay, we'll go with the threes then. All you right. feel better about it? Go with the threes. Well, I think I do feel better about. The th- he's gone over the threes in the same type of clip, and it's spicy, so we get a little juice. Yeah, on and it. let's right. take the lower on on Beekman. Okay, lower points. Yeah, fifteen and a half. Oh, this does is he, nice. Does Beekman shoot threes? I mean, he's capable of hitting it, but I don't know. Well, un- I wouldn't describe him as a lower three point lower three point shots or a, th- a half three is uh, one point five spicy. But against that Colorado State defense, I don't know. They're mm. not they're not scrappy around the uh, the old yeah. three point line. I'll just uh, I'll, I'll I'll would just take the points lower. All right, I'm looking at his real quick. I'm looking at his numbers. Colorado so he, State defense 191st in the nation at defending the three. So he's hit a three in pack. his last four games. So let's get out of that position. So All points. Right. Yep. Hunter to win 375 over on underdog fantasy promo code S G P N. And uh, if you're coming out to Vegas, Ooh. make sure you get in your uh, underdog plays because uh, unfortunately underdog not active in Las Vegas. Almost accidentally um, put a grand on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Colby, did I tell you this? What's that? I accidentally bet a thousand dollars on St. Joe's the other day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was the uh, the lead in on the show the other day. My it, God, still still can't. I mean, I so you, sometimes your electric gambling moments are just accidents. You have to embrace, <laughs> you have to embrace them. It's like when you rebet that you bet the team twice sometimes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or you th- you thought you had a bet on the one team oh, you rooting them the entire time, <laughs> and then you go log into your account and you realize you like fat thumbed. And bet on the other side. <laughs> yeah, I've I've been on the I've been on both sides of that. Where holy shit, why did my account balance go up? Oh my <laughs> god, you you genius! You clicked on the wrong button and you won the bet. I've had it bo- go both ways. Some of the most electric moments in gambling. Yeah, one time I accidentally bet like a six-team parlay with the round robin but option on, <laughs> and it was like I was betting a small amount, but it was like all, all of a sudden my balance went from like twelve hundred to. Close to zero, and I was like, "What did I just?" <laughs> Damn. It worked out all right. It worked out all right. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have remembered it. All right, you want to talk first four? Yes, let's go. All right, you, are we're heading to Dayton? So is Dayton, Ohio, still gets the corner still of the get market. It. Still get it. You don't like that? Do you like the idea of rotating it, or you like this? I just think Dayton. I mean, I'm open to the idea of rotating this is like, it. This but is like I, but the go spot on Monopoly. You like go- it there? No, nah, I think I, I like rotating it because what happens if Dayton d- eventually gets? That's probably why they didn't get the play-in game. They're like, no, let's give them the seventh seed. Come to Dayton have a home game. Couple a uh, couple of first four trends, and this is uh, courtesy of Veasan. Shout out to Visa. Get their uh, free college basketball guide. Veasan dot com slash guide. Over the last eleven uh, NCAA tournaments, underdogs are fifty five point eight percent edge in the first four round. Really. Yeah, interesting. But uh, since 2001, there have only been eight first four games with lines of five points or higher, and that's probably 2011, right? Because that's when it yeah. started. Favorites are seven and one straight up, and six and two ATS in these contests. So if we do get any big favorites, actually look to favorites there. Um, some more bench uh, spread benchmarks in that same span. Favorites of less than five points. Are 26 and 22 straight up, but 19 and 28 and one ATS. So small favorites have struggled. Big favorites, okay in general, seemingly for the dogs. This one though is pretty crazy. Outright winners have gone 35 and three ATS in the first four rounds since 2013. So if you think the team's gonna win, take them to cover. Because uh, I mean, look at that. That's a crazy uh, win. And cover is yeah. the, is the biggest strongest trend in the away. first four. All right, so this game is on Tuesday, March nineteenth, uh, three forty p.m. on the West Coast. Like I said, Dayton, Ohio. We've got the sixteen seed Wagner out of the NEC. Let's see if I can do this and get it all right off the top of my head. And then we N-E-C. have Howard, the Bison. Which shout out to them for using the the right uh, mammal name. The bison out of the Miak. Howard laying two and a half, minus one forty five on the money line, plus one twenty five for Wagner. Total is one twenty eight and a half. I project the first half under will be around fifty nine. Um, I actually have a, a range 
And uh, fi- but uh, yeah, my my best guess will be fifty nine on the first half under. Sean, we watched Wagner. I like the, I like Wagner, man. They went on the road, back to back to back games against the three best teams in their conference. On the road, they won. They I believe they did it with seven healthy players in the championship yes. game, which is almost like a rec league story that you tell your buddies. Like, yeah, we had to oh, strap had seven a guys. That's all we need. It's a, it's uh, it's almost like when my dad filled in for a rec league and he had. Uh, dress shoes on <laughs> and was getting black marks all over the uh, gym. Oh, that was hilarious. Uh, I I like Wagner. I like this Wagner team. I understand you look at the advanced stuff. Uh, Howard is better, but the one Howard twentieth in the or nineteenth in the nation from the three point line. But that's Wagner's sweet. That's what they do best at defense is defend the three ball. Uh, they're holding their opponents at twenty nine point eight percent from behind the arc. I'm I'm all over the uh, what are they seagulls? Give Seahawks. Me the, give me Wagner, which is our. I mean, you don't see any Seahawks in Staten Island. I'll tell you that. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe Russell Wilson looking looking for some action. <laughs> but uh, and Wagner has four days of rest advantage, right? And that would be interesting to see how much how much that matters. Well, because I I would. If Wagner had just played, I kind of almost want to fade him because they certainly dumped the Gatorade. His store, you know, getting this run when in the tournament. But Howard, I think, in a weird way, may have dumped their Gatorade, and they're only their four days of rest advantage is a big difference. I'm on. I'm on Wagner here. I'll take Howard. Mm. Um, I mean, you mentioned all that, but you didn't mention Wagner's 306th ranked yeah. offense. No, uh, I, I, I did say that you look at the, you look at the kind of the eye test metric test. It's bad. There are a couple of things they do well, and this is a mojo play for sure. Well, I like experience and Seth towns of Howard is, is finishing his eighth season of college basketball. That is a guy that's uh what? 30 years old. Did he play with Wes Hunsel? Uh Elvis Hayes. Did he? Um, but uh, yeah, uh, look, Seth towns. Bryce Harris too much. And I think Howard's offense is the real reason. I know, I know Wagner's defense has been really good, but I also think Howard's a little bit better offensively than a lot of those. I was going to uh, say, I, there, if you look at the conference rankings, you know, they're, they're, we're, we're down in the, the real deep uh, depths of the sea here, but the North, the NEC and the, the SWAC are kind of the ultimate like trash. And then you have it, it is a tier up to the Patriot League and the MIAC. And I think the like to give you a, an idea of the gap, um, it, it's it's similar to the difference between like uh, I don't know um, the Horizon League and like the MAC, which is pretty solid. Like that's a pretty yeah. big gap. So yeah. you know to see this number being sitting at two and a half, I see Ken Palm's projecting two. So you know always converge half towards point the, of value on my. Uh- Point of my, my biggest my issue Wagner is like this Wagner team is still banged up, and I think to Colby's point, but I think, the, but they they're coming off a full week of rest. Yeah, but I mean they they didn't have healthy players. I think it's one thing to get rested; it's another like how many of these guys are going to be back. Do on we the know court? they're not coming back? <clears throat> I, it's a, I mean they, we're talking about Wagner. You think there's any sort of that we got to get the the carrier pigeons or the, the whatever the. the I'll text my buddy yeah. who went there. I'll Send some rats any, uh, uh, <laughs> with the with the stat rats. Uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of with. I'm in the same position as Colby. Oh, I think rare chalk play for you, Ryan. Rare chalk play for me. I know. I I appreciate the handicap because that's exactly what I would say if I liked <laughs> Wagner. I I think the handy like looking at the way that they defend. They they're a good matchup. They yeah. they they on paper they're a good matchup for this. But I, I do think uh, class step up here. I'm laying the two and a half. Uh, nothing better than the the first half unders in these games. Uh, Cause you get, you really get to appreciate how, no matter how good they looked in their, their conference tournament, they're going to look like ass at times in this game. All right. Six, 10 on the West coast, Colorado state, the Rams love for Collins. They're taking on a team from a, uh, another um, not so beautiful place. Charlottesville, Virginia, <laughs> Colorado state laying one and a half shout out to the mountain West minus one thirty on the money line UVA plus one ten. 119 and a half the full game total. I'm projecting the ha- first half total will be in the 55 to 55 and a half range. I, I mean, every year there's a team where lo- people are like, "Oh, how did they get in?" Ah, they didn't even think they were going to get in themselves. It, it 
I, I, I like Colorado State, but doesn't Virginia just mess with their day and like the, all of a sudden yep. Virginia's the team that goes on the little mini run? Colorado State's gonna get a bunch of the money, I bet. And oh yeah. If they know, are th- I I have a feeling Thou shalt not worship false gods. Now the, the free throw shooting for Virginia, it's like if they could just make a I couple of I mean we got throws, two we got two yeah. commandments. You guys, ju- we just read I, off the. Commandments. I haven't given you a pick. I'm giving we you just, a narrative. We just genuflected. We play. We prayed to the gambling gods, and then you just spit in their face with blasphemy. All right, give me my music. Already? Let's go. I don't want to root for Virginia here. No, no one. Give does. me Colorado State. Oh, look, we've got a Benedict. Let's sighting. go. String him up for treason. Colorado. I mean, <laughs> one, the the free throw discrepancy is crazy. Tony Bennett, ATS. Another one. Uh, this Colorado- terrifying matchup if you're Colorado State. Yeah, yeah, because Virginia has a really good defense and experience, but it's Colorado State teams also kind of playing with house money. I mean, it, Colby, no one had them going to the tournament preseason, right? No, I think some people did. They beat be- Creighton. They beat Michael Crichton at Creighton um, last year. Uh, no, but I'm just saying. I'm like, saying coming into the year, still Isaiah Stevens coming yeah, back, he could have went to the NBA. There was a little hype around them, but uh, yeah, they also have the best player on the court. That matters in the NBA. I don't think that often matters in, especially against a team like Virginia. That would be that would be my angle there, and I think you know, to Colby's point, the reason it's terrifying is because they'll find a way. Well, and and, the, they, and guess gonna, what? Yeah. What is Colorado fucking lazy at defending the three point line? It's I hate UVA, matchup. and it's I would a love matchup. I, we, you know what the problem is? I need UVA to advance so I can once again taunt their fans at <laughs> Hoop Central when they lose in the actual first round. As much as I like, and did you did you give out the Mountain West trend? Do we have that data yet? We will. That's we'll, another one that's really scary. They're horrible. The Mountain well, West they, has done badly, but this is the the, the reality. They get misseeded every year. Well, so, but that's yeah. part of it. But yeah. this, they're not being. If anything, this is the gift, right? Yeah. I don't know. I think I think every year we have a team that people get really upset about. It's been your Syracuse Orange in the past, Sean. They're like, this is orange ridiculous. Man. Orange man. They were the orange men back there. Yeah. They're currently the orange. <laughs> uh, I, I I every year it happens. Every year it happens. They have women on their team. Every year it happens. I mean, they might. UVA, Charlottesville, they're progressive. <laughs> Every year it happens. Do, and it's usually the team that's most un, like unfit to be in the tournament that then gets the juice and 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 as much as I don't like UVA, Tony Bennett is a good coach and like what did Colby say? They won with a trash team. Dude, they beat Florida this year. I mean, all right, you know what? Yeah. Let's move on. I don't want to say any more nice things about Virginia. 819 ATS, just remember that, right? I I want to root for Colorado State. Then root for him. Nothing Col- stopping Col- you. Colby, you know they this can win right. by one point. You Wait, he's cover. not taking Colorado State. No, he's taking UVA. Wow. You got you. Oh you know I'm God. right. Wow. I know. I know. It's it's sad. Tell what I'm gonna have to text Bud Foster tonight, Sean. <laughs> All right, give me Colorado. Ah! <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that people were listening understand understand what to do. Wink, wink. See, bullying works, everyone. Reminder: Smash that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up in the chat. <laughs> I, I do. I want the Discord to have a nice uh, UVA position. All right, let's head over to Wednesday, three forty p.m. on the West Coast. And reminder: uh, Like Sean said earlier, ten p.m. on the West Coast live Monday through Friday, doing Vegas shows, talking Vegas, talking all baby. the games. And I'm sure we'll have some Vegas stories too. Grambling. I feel like I say that wrong. Grambling, grambling. Mon- Grambling. Uh, I'm definitely saying you're wrong. Gra- Gra- and it's Grambling State, right? Yes, yeah, Grambling State. Technically, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mont, they're they're 16 seed. They're uh, out of the um, SWAC. SWAC. SWAC and Montana SWAC. State, who was the surprise of victor of big the sky. Big Sky. You, I'm trying to do this. I'm, I'm I'm trying to impress myself by getting it right. Uh, Montana State laying three and a half. The Bobcats minus 180 wow. on the money line. Grambling State. Plus 150, 135 and a half for the total here, the highest total we've we've discussed so far. Projecting this one to open somewhere in the 62 and a half, 63 range. I always wonder if I should try to project it like accurate or if I want to bump it low. So when it comes out higher, I feel like I'm getting a better number. <laughs> On the first half unders. 
I I really liked what I saw uh, when Montana State going on that run. They won a good conference. Yeah, they won a good conference tournament. And they're playing a bad like they're playing the worst conference. Well, and and I read off that trend about the the spread when it gets to five. I think there's a chance this could get to five. Really? Well, it's yeah. I mean, these are openers, and for the first four games, I think they're relatively soft. I think there's going to be a little bit of movement. Does I guess it, I wouldn't be shy. I I was I saw four and a half. Really? All right. So looking at uh, so I see both Fanduel and Draft. Well, I, I'm not looking at the updated DraftKings maybe, but oh, I see. All right, DK has four. Fanduel has three and a half. The opener in this game was four and a half, so maybe okay. it's, it's been bet the other way. Yeah, because I saw four and a half. I guess yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if it gets to that five where we're talking about these. It fits that trend. Well, I, I think that Montana State to me this is the biggest mismatch in the first four. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, says, I, I'm with Fred you. Agrees. And and I think the numbers even dilute. You know, they they lost their whole team. Matt Luggy comes in. Former Lehigh Mountain Hawk basketball player Ka-ka! and assistant head coach for a good seven years there, yep. and director of basketball yep. operations. Sean, yep. Uh, Look at this I, Montana State offense. They're they're top fifty in a lot of advanced stuff. Let's look at Grambling State, three hundred fifth in the nation at shooting the two ball. You need you need a turnover percentage. They're three hundred forty first in the nation, almost the worst uh, team. And not turned it over on the offensive side of the ball. This is uh, this I it could be a blow. Easy money. Easy money. I, I really like this uh Montana State team. They're hot. Let's just when you have Whoa. to when you have to take up they've been resting a little bit. But I'm saying like when you have to take uh, you know, like I said, they, they struggled out the gate. They lost their coach, their a lot of their key players from a year ago. Raquan Battle was one of them that West Virginia. Um you know, it takes time to to grow that continuity and new new uh, you know, offense, new defense. So I'm with you. I just think they're better. They're in a different class to me than Grambling. Yeah, it, it certainly. Um, you know, this will also be a game that tests kind of the fitness aspect of it. How much rest have they had? They they play a very short bench as compared to Grambling, who plays a very deep bench. But again, I think it is important to call out like the when you look at the the comp like it is hard to look at some numbers. I understand they're meant to be normalized over the entire nation, but some of these conferences just aren't as good. And I think the SWAC Ken Palm agrees. The SWAC is the worst conference in the country. And, and it's, it's pretty significant. The difference between the big sky at 22nd and the SWAC uh, at, at the bottom. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you guys. I'm, I guess I'll lay the point. I'm, I'm shocked to see the projection here uh, from, from multiple places is short of this. Which is maybe why we saw four and a half go to four. Like Ken Palm has this at two. Yeah, oh, interesting. Mm. So I, I don't know if your your number um, is going to move all the way. Maybe it gets out to five. Uh, certainly means we got some CLV in our pocket. All right, we've got the final of the first four games taking place in Dayton, Ohio, six ten on the West Coast Thursday, March twentieth. The ten seeds of Colorado, who are Buffaloes, not like Howard Bison, Buffaloes. And Boise State, who are Broncos, Sean, another uh, fun encounter we had while uh, hanging out and chopping it up with uh, the parent of a first round, uh, future first round pick. We also got to meet the uh, pimp of the, oh, yeah. the Bronco pimp guy. I didn't actually get his the name. The Boise State super fan. Yeah, he he. Do you he, know who we're talking about? Cohen? I do know who you're talking. Yeah, about. He, yeah. he was. Uh, yeah. uh, they're friends with the cir- the circa is very friendly to the people of Boise State. Uh, they're, they're, they had a local radio show come down nice. uh, mountain, a lot of mountain West stuff going on. So the, uh, whatever his name, I I'm just going to call he was somewhere between Zorro and a pimp, but <laughs> themed in Boise state colors. Uh, it didn't strike me as the kind of guy that's going to go break a Bronco out in the wild. Seemed like he was going to go like, talking he, about voodoo daddy, voodoo daddy. Yeah, okay. All right. That's his so name. voodoo daddy. Definitely <laughs> not riding Broncos, but maybe um, taming something else. Uh, all right. I'm, I'm going to set, uh, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to send the photo of voodoo daddy to Josh to pull up because this is uh it's uh, it's so, amazing. Just imagine us hanging out at the mega bar with this guy. We're trying. Well, to- and he was all. And it took me a second because Circa was doing this uh, fun '90s party. <laughs> if you li- if you if you watched Vison, uh, Derek did the show in like a Nirvana shirt and oh, yeah, very yes. casual Derek, which he normally is in the suit. Yeah, so we were hanging out with the uh, Voodoo Daddy. Here. I know he's got like a Boise oh. State grill in there. So and just so, so All, just uh, let me help the upgrade because that jacket he was wearing there, he has a version that is uh, fur. 
mm. or like feathery, like very pimp, very <laughs> pimp. Like I, I, one hundred percent. He had the, he had a grill on. Yeah, I, I thought he was coming from the '90s party, but he was dressed in his just in the Boise State apparel. I said, "What's up, man?" He goes, "I just gotta, I gotta kiss the ring. I gotta tell Derek, thank you. I'm like, All right. I gotta come pay my respects." Derek, I, he, he, I'm like, Derek's busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, shout out to Boise State. No, oh, it's fun, fun night. Uh, Colorado, Boise State, Boise State catching two and a half plus one fifteen on the money line. Uh, Colorado minus one thirty five. Forty one and a half is the total. Project the first half. This is the biggest total of the first four. So the uh, Wednesday game is a lot higher scoring than the Tuesday game. Sixty five, sixty five and a half is where I think the first half total will, will open. I mean, you know, fun that the Pac twelve uh, Col- that Colorado is leaving for the Big Twelve. Could uh, end up being a conference that houses Boise State in the new Pac-12 slash Mountain West Alliance yeah. slash yeah whatever the fuck we call con- it. Yeah. What's but what's a better name, Pac-12 or Mountain West? Pac West. I like the I I like having Mountain in your conference name. Mountain Twelve. I, I, nothing's wrong. Are with- they? Have we gotten any more news as to what's going to happen? They have it? like a, a a deal where they sch- they're scheduling each other, but yeah. they're not in yet. They, ha- they have a yeah. two year s- scheduling alliance with the Mountain West. Is the Pac Twelve channel still going to be a channel? Do we know that? Uh, it's part of where they're getting all that revenue. So I do <laughs> think it is. That's going to be. Uh, so although great. maybe they should try to repurpose it. And then th- there's like some asterisk caveats with like a cu- like a, a couple sports are joining other conferences. WCC, yeah. like baseball. I guess yeah. is a big deal for Oregon State. Um, but yeah, no, I I think yeah, I, I don't have as much love other than our buddy uh, Andrew Meadow or whatever his name is. I don't have as much love for Boise State. And I, I don't really have a ton of not love even for Co- Tyson Degen Hart. I love the name Tyson Degen Hart, and I and I think Colby has kind of is the main reason we pay attention to the Colorado program. And I I want to say were we watching them um, on Friday out in Vegas, Sean? Was that uh, the times all melting together? But yeah, but these two teams, I not, like I don't know if I would label either of these teams as bet on teams for me coming into the tournament. Colorado so and Boise State. Either like to me, this I'm I'm kind of not positive on either one of these teams. I like this Colorado team, and to Colby's point, they have a really good roster. Certainly have had some hiccups in the season, and that's why they they kind of have to play in here. But again, with the exception of that loss at Oregon, and I, I think Oregon just kind of. I, I still don't love this Oregon team. Maybe I'm just being a bit of a hater, but Colorado you, it closed out pretty strong. Beat USC, Utah, Cal, Stanford, Oregon, Oregon State, Utah, Washington State. Like they went on a nice bit of a, a, a run here. Struggled with Arizona, Arizona State, and Cal there. Middle of the season had a little bit of a hiccup, but I, I still think they're a pretty good team, at least comparatively to the to the Pac-12. I think some of this is how do you think a team from the Pac-12 like Colorado offensive base would match up against a team like Boise State? I'm going to take the Buffs because I have a I like to handicap the handicapper generally, <laughs> and I we felt I fell for it when I took ECU. But normally when Colby's down on his teams, that's when you want to take the teams. When he's high on them, he's pumping them up. He, it's because he knows they need the motivation. We they're not believe. Good. Because they're not good teams. Colorado, he's been downplaying this Colorado team. Yeah. But, and I think they get it done here. But I said, like, this is a roster that could play for the national championship. So uh I'm all over the buffs here. Uh KJ Simpson, you know, another thing is they I want to talk to Simpson. If I had to defend a little bit of Ted Boy, I'll say the team was was not healthy that that often. Uh Julian Hammond was injured some. Cody Williams, the five star freshman, was injured some. And they're twenty four um, and ten. I mean, yeah. some of their losses, you know, they lost an OT game to Florida State. They lost a rivalry game against Colorado State. Did, yeah, did they get destroyed in Arizona? Should they beat Arizona State? Certainly. Should they beat Cal? Yes. But that was a bit of a little bit of a hiccup. They lost on the road at Washington State and Utah, which I don't think are necessarily bad losses. Yeah. I mean, Arizona clearly has their number, but other than that, like, and they they lost at UCLA. Probably should have won that, but uh, I mean, I think Eddie, it's Eddie Lampkin's season. been a difference maker for them lately. I think that the way this team has been trending towards the uh, in in championship play there and in, in conference tournament play has me believe in Colorado is is playing a lot will, at a higher level than yeah. Boise right now. Will Prime be there? I mean, there's that too. Dayton, Ohio. Prime. I mean, I just feel it feels like there there's 
the the juice from the Colorado football program earlier in the year when they were rushing the field <laughs> willy nilly. Who knew they were going to start a whole trend of storming? Woo, uh, sh- smoke about prime, prime, I mean, we joked about how Prime was going to change college, prime. change college sports and fix it. Well, he he brought the storming back. There's a little bit of juice in this program. I I certainly will take them before Boise State, even though a lot of the same things you mentioned about Colorado are true about Boise State in terms of how they've played down the stretch. But when they've stepped up to the top of their conferences class, they generally lose. And so, yeah, and, and I would just say Arizona obviously has Colorado's number, but, but Arizona's, Arizona's a very good they, team. So. They were on the contenders list, Sean. Yeah. No, I mean, I look at Boise State losses to like. Nevada only, you know, San Diego state taking them to overtime, losing to New Mexico and, um, and all of the good teams in the mountain West have given them trouble. Yeah. Basically unless, uh, <laughs> with the exception Dirt of some games. saying uh, in the chat saying this team can compete for the title. Wow. Full fade. <laughs> oh no. Is that do we Do we have to switch? He I didn't say they were going to there. I mean, yeah. shit. I, like I said, I wouldn't have put them in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, come on. Don't, I'm don't just be, saying roster wise. He's saying wise, they have a yeah. ceiling. Yeah. yeah ceiling. He, come on. He's setting. Up, he's he's laying the groundwork for playing both Co- sides. Colorado's roster. The, the Kings is better than San Diego reasonable. State's roster last year. Yeah, I I like drinking tea. Why are we yeah. getting rid of all this tea? <laughs> that someone's got to pay for the infrastructure of the uh, English countryside, and all, but also as Americans, we should be able to make our own choices. And taxation without representation, I truly believe in. But we also have to re- respect the crown, right, Colby? I mean, you know, there are some people that are like, guys, we don't make good tea. Why are we getting rid of all the good I, tea? I, I mean, America certainly has a roster. They could go on to be the greatest nation in the world, or they could get eliminated in the first battle. It's really, it's really tough to say at this. Why point. wouldn't we steal the tea? Why are we destroying the tea? Uh, I love, I love, I love America versus uh, England, like college basketball analogies. Coach speak. All uh, right, Kramer, are you doing the trifecta in yeah. Colorado? Yeah, yeah. And I'm also, um, oh man, U- UVA was going to be my one dog too. I'm in trouble. It's funny. Mm. We just talked about how the dogs are slightly stronger, and then uh, well, but, Kramer went all chalk. But I a lot of too. that was the bigger dogs, and I think we we were also, you know, I I don't know. I got talked off of UVA. I can't help myself. Hey, have you guys signed up? Hall of Fame bets. College basketball product is ready for the tournament. Uh, HOFBets.com. Wow, and producer Josh. So, producer Josh has been using Hall of Fame bets religiously. Just sent us a, another message here. He's hit a, a, a 10 to 1. Josh, bring up that message again. You've hit a 10 to 1, a 12 to 1, and I think another 10 to 1, all on Hall of Fame bets using. Using these, uh, it's great for optimizing parlays, player props, uh, game lines. Fifty percent off your first month using the promo code SGPN. If you don't like it, hey, you, you get fifty percent off the first month. You can cancel then. But uh, like Josh, and again, shout out to everyone who's uh, DM me and giving me great feedback. The tool is very easy to use. Uh, I will be using it, I'm sure, for our March Madness picks episodes. Can't believe we're going to Vegas tomorrow. Uh, HOFBets.com <laughs> promo code SGPN. I, I was having this moment too, where I, I'm pulling back the curtain a little bit. Sean and I were out in Vegas on Friday. There was some travel shenanigans. We ended up having to to drive. Long story. Anyway, the we come home, and the wife and kids are gone. They're on a spring break trip. Like I'm sitting at home with the dogs. Like why didn't I just? Why don't I just stay at? The, I could be sitting poolside <laughs> at the Circa right now. Uh, yeah, uh, shout out to us. We're on a flight 420 on Monday. Woo! It's smoking my weed. All right, so that's it. We we picked four games. We now uh, have some locks. Oh yeah, time for our best bets for March eight nineteenth uh, and March twentieth. Yes, now we got Tuesday and Wednesday. Yes. And I did the math just basing today off uh, yep. St. Patrick's Day, March seventeenth. Mm. Kramer, what are you doing? What do you got for the locks? Are we doing? We're doing two locks and a dog. Oh, I, out of four I, games? I only put two locks because there's only four games. Okay, no dogs. I figured this way it gave us some flexibility okay. on what we wanted to emphasize in terms of what our favorite plays were. Uh, and also, I'll, I'll, can I start by just saying I guess we should do a uh, the state of Colorado advances. Okay. Parlay. I mean that's a, I, I have a better even, one. I could personally. even be talked into a Pacific Northwest parlay. Mm. But then I I went further and said, "Holy crap. The Pacific Northwest and just throwing a vise in from the East Coast." I was going to say where the Buffalo Rome. Oh, Howard, Colorado. Oh yeah. What where the bison Rome? 
Is there would there be Rams there maybe? And Bobcats? No. No. Just where the Buffalo roam. All right. Uh lock. Well, I certainly I certainly can't make it Colorado State. My lock is gonna be Oh, I almost want to just dabble in the gross stuff here. Montana State laying the three and a half. Oh. Lock number two. I you know what? Colby talked me into Colorado. Okay. I'm not I, I do not like this Boise State team. And that Andrew Meadow guy is a fucking nerd. <laughs> and yeah, I think um I like the idea of doing a uh, a bison buffalo parlay. I like the idea of doing a Colorado parlay, and I also like an idea of doing Colorado with all of its adjacent states parlay. All right, Woo! so we got a bunch of options. <laughs> uh, as as boring as it is, I'm going to take Montana State and yeah. Colorado as my two locks. I I love this Colorado State team, but I think it's just because I'm a little partial to um, Isaiah Stevens, and just they're just such a fun team to watch. But I I do worry a little bit about uh, UVA the infrastructure. But the, Tony Bennett uh, so bad ATS that that is. But they were laying me. big numbers a lot of that. That's why the ATS numbers trade. No, that's true. The straight uh, up number is a little. Yeah, bit better. it's not. They weren't playing on playing games. Uh, Wagner money line of course is my dog. dog. The Seahawks find a way to soar. So you added Howard. a dog back in. I like mm. that. Oh wait, did mm. you say no dogs? Yeah, I said, well, there's only oh, four okay. games doing locking up two games. Mm. But I mean, I don't want to, you know, no, please, no, please, no, please no. be you. All right. I'll, I can, I, I, I would caution you with whack. I, you go watch the way they celebrated when they won their conference. It was all right. Look, end I'll of just, the road. Shit. It, it was this, like, I'll, I'll leave it out and uh, I'll use it in my parlay. Oh, oh Colby. Perfect. What do you got? What are your two favorite locks? Uh, we are going with the Colorado Buffaloes number one, and then Montana state Bobcats number two. And we oh, are wow. parlaying. Wow. Hold on. Has this ever happened? We're parlaying Colorado and Howard. I think we need Colorado to get- lay in two and a half Howard lay in two and a half Colby's parlay. I like that one. Put me in on that one. Okay. And I'll zag a little bit. I'm going to say Wagner money line and Colorado state money line for my part life. Oh, I like that. A bird sitting on a Ram's horn. Yeah. A little, a little, little, uh, little wildlife parlay. Yeah. Do some bot, like some live streams where we sketch our locks. Love wildlife. Uh, is this the first time we've, the discord has two locks? Cause we all, we, we, uh, we triple lock saluted. Ooh. Yeah. Discord's uh, getting in on the locks. So discord is locking up the opposite of our picks, Boise state plus two and a half. And they're also locking up uh Gramlin State plus three and a half. All right. Uh, I also want to propose the Colorado, Colorado parlay since we, since we put it out there. Yeah, Colorado Laying two the points. Steps. Yeah, the, the Colorado the state of Colorado advances to the first round parlay. So just money line then. Yeah. Colorado mm, money line. Yeah. There's gold in them there, Hills. All right. You know one of these spreads is gonna matter. That's my that's my <laughs> prediction. The spread will not be dead. Although we did have that trend of thirty-two and three, yeah, straight up winners, also covered. Yeah, and I'm saying I'm saying one. You're calling your shot. I like it, Ryan. I like I'm it. Saying one. It's hey, probably that fucking UVA team. Met, uh, get in on our uh, free March Madness contest, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash madness. And again, it's for subscribers only. Every show you subscribe to on our network, you get another ten thousand credits. It's bankroll challenge. So I can't wait to see Cody starting balance. Well, I I <laughs> I like the I like this idea because it rewards. We have a bunch of tired fans who love all the shows on the network, and we got a bunch of great ones. This is a great way to get you involved and reward the biggest fans. And if you give submit, them a head start, if you submit bullshit, you're de- disqualified. Yeah. No, mm. there's and there's no appeal process. No appeal process. Mm. So if I if someone sends in a screenshot of something they shouldn't, yeah, I don't need to see. We that. will Lemon randomly, party. We will randomly get a couple selfies. I can guarantee that. <laughs> the best one ever was <laughs> it's just it, like a guy uh, taking a photo in a mirror. Like what the fuck? That's the, he was doing his review. <laughs> yeah. He was subscribing. <laughs> Just wanted to show you his face. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash madness. Get in on the sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs. We've got multiple chances to win a thousand bucks for free. Two thousand if you're a Patreon member. Uh get in on Patreon, get access to the pick sheets. Uh that's gonna be huge for March Madness as well. Very beautiful. Very beautiful sheets, well put together by Kramer. Uh, we will be doing um, bonus contests, obviously, for the uh, Patreons as well. Smash that subscribe button. Toss this nice rating review. That always uh, a nice uh, old uh, Apple Podcast review is pretty great. Merch Madness still going on. Promo code Madness, fifteen percent off everything. Check out the college basketball experience with Colby and crew. 
Uh, they got the live show going on at the uh, Drunken Horse Cantina. <laughs> What it's the uh, stagecoach? <laughs> it is. Uh, I I gave out this nice information before, but if you want to go back, you're invited to Sean Horse oh, Trailer wow, Hideout. Horse Trailer Hideout. Six thirty Pacific time. We're actually that Colorado game will be on on the oh, on the Wednesday, okay. but Tuesday and Wednesday six thirty uh, p.m. from the Horse Trailer maybe, Hideout. Maybe Sean and I can squeeze it in. Buckham Broncos. Oh, I fish. Can you uh, actually Buffalo's? Buckham, can you, can Buffalo's. you handle my rider? It's uh, three Jameson and Gingers. Right. No, uh, no green M and M's. They have a mechanical bowl for you. No, oh, I'm joking. Okay. I, I, they, that gets they, me super <laughs> horny. Wait, do they? <laughs> no, I don't think. I'd so. I'd love to get caught on video twerking <laughs> on top of a bowl. That looks. Oh, so yeah. I mean, first of all, no on a mechanical. Where, bowl. where does the mechanical bowl operator fall on the pantheon of like uh, strip club DJs and other <laughs> strange, creepy? Uh, Creepy day jobs where you're not actually taking your clothes. Shout off. out to Weehawk. He said he got some new merch yesterday, taking advantage of merch madness. Thank you, Weehawk. Oh, uh, wow. He, he lo- he's uh he's a true DJ. Always appreciate uh getting tagged in all your DJ activity photos. Mm. Great backyard, uh, he, too. He, yeah, great backyard, great oh. lifestyle. This guy lives a great yeah, life. I, 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 it, it, it's he's he's he, what he's got reserved seats at the casino. You, you, he's got you his name him. there. He's got a pile of uh, first half under tickets. He's got like he, a, a TV on wheels that come out. <laughs> so he's like in it, it, like having a bonfire watching the game. Gotta with hang two, out with this two guy. great Pyrenees uh, just mm-hmm. hanging out. It's just got cool dogs, yeah. cool lifestyle. I mean, if yeah. You're, if, yeah, he's a grown up with a nice backyard. I <laughs> res- respect. If there's different levels. Uh, I haven't, had, people a, I haven't had a backyard in years. Some people are purple belts. Some <laughs> people are black belts. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. We'll see you out in Vegas. Hit us up uh, at gambling podcast. If you're going, uh, we're always down to meet up, crack some cold ones for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green. He's Ryan. Hopefully Brett Favre doesn't enter our contest. Sean Kramer. Let it ride.